In Sweden, over the course of the 90s, more and more people claimed to be affected by electromagnetic radiation. Like allergic reactions, the problems they described forced them to take shelter, to withdraw and physically cut themselves off from a world that had grown hostile. Known for his militant positions, Ole Johansson is one of the first researchers in the world to seriously consider these people's symptoms. After leading studies on the skin cells of people irritated by computer screens, he's become a historical figure in the debate on artificial radiation by fighting for social recognition of these symptoms and giving them a generic name, electrohypersensitivity. Every human being is electrosensitive. If I would take you and put your fingers into the socket, you would have a strong voltage shock, you know. So that's a typical electrosensitivity. Uh, and that's normal, of course. But these people with the electro hyper or oversensitivity, they react maybe to fields that you and I, we do not react to. When you look on the incidence, there has been some very sharp increases. Uh, for instance, 1997, and then the digital techniques in mobile telecommunication was introduced here in Sweden. And for some reason, the number of such persons and their complaints, they again started to increase. Electrohypersensitivity is officially recognized in Sweden as a disability and 2% of the population claims to be affected. But although the number of registered cases is increasing throughout the world, the phenomenon remains a medical enigma. If I know or can figure out what happens in the body, then I can also hopefully try to do something about it. I think most of us reason that way. The opponents, the people that didn't believe in this from the very beginning, they said that such persons, they were just uh, uh, postmenopausal women, they were imagining this, they had some psychosomatic reaction, etc., which could be the case, although when new groups were added, these counter explanations died away, of course. Electro hypersensitivity raises a question that has yet to be clarified and arouses the curiosity of scientists. Because until now, no lab study has clearly proven the link between exposure and the appearance of symptoms, adding more fodder to the feud between those who suspect EH sufferers are victims of collective paranoia and those who consider them harbingers of a health scandal. The studies led by Andrew Marino explore the human body's capacity to detect signals at a very weak frequency. For 20 minutes, Marino isolates his human guinea pigs from all environmental influences and then submits them to random stimulation of an extremely weak electromagnetic field. The basic idea of the study is to prove conclusively that uh, electromagnetic fields enter the human body and are detected by the body, probably in the head, uh, and uh, result in changes in human brain electrical activity. Analysis of subjects' brain activity shows that they do indeed detect the signal, even at an unconscious level. The nervous system detects sound, light, heat, touch, taste, electromagnetic fields. The same process. There's a specialized cell located someplace. It interacts with the electromagnetic field that comes into the body and generates a signal to the brain to tell the brain that there's an electromagnetic field in the subject's environment. The brain recognizes that there's no useful information. It therefore ignores the signal. But this process of detecting and ignoring, detecting and ignoring, taxes the 
adaptive ability of the of the body. In other words, you're weaker if this is going on all the time compared to your your health if this wasn't going on all the time. According to Marino, humans react to electromagnetic waves in the same way as they react to other environmental stimuli. But this original theory remains restricted by the lack of funding Marino has for his research. At this stage, despite the growing amount of evidence, human sensitivity isn't unanimously accepted by the scientific community. But behind the problem of the body's sensitivity to artificial waves, the question of their harmfulness re-emerges. Do they represent a major public health issue? Governments are launching vast research programs, and scientists are called upon to provide rapid and final answers. In the year 2000, the European Union decided to fund the Reflex project proposed by the Verum Foundation in Germany. The aim was to observe whether mobile phone radiation had adverse effects on human cells. Franz Edelkoffer was the research coordinator. His role was to combine the expertise of biologists and physicists from 12 labs in seven different European countries to come up with a study he hoped would be irrefutable. Im Reflex Projekt versuchten wir herauszufinden, ob die Mobilfunkstrahlung in der Lage ist, biologische Wirkungen unterhalb der Grenzwerte auszulösen. Four years later, Adelkoffer presented his report, which he centered on the most alarming results. Die wichtigsten Ergebnisse lassen sich zusammenfassen mit hochfrequente elektromagnetische Felder sind in der Lage, die Gene zu schädigen. Dies haben wir nachgewiesen durch äh, das Aufzeigen von DNA-Strangbrüchen, von Einzel- und Doppelstrangbrüchen. Doppelstrangbrüche können ebenfalls zu einem hohen Prozentsatz repariert werden, aber wohl nicht hundertprozentig. In fact, in a living organism, there are specialized proteins that repair breaks in DNA strands. But the bigger the breaks, the higher the risk that something goes wrong in the repair which can lead to chromosomal aberrations. Die Zellen, die eine Genschädigung aufweisen, sterben in einem hohen Prozentsatz der Fälle ab. Gelegentlich kann es vorkommen, dass eine Zelle überlebt und die kann der, der Beginn äh, eines malignen Prozesses sein. But many researchers are skeptical about the capacity of microwaves to break DNA strands, even indirectly. Adelkoffer's results are highly disputed, and despite his admonitions, he's received no reaction from the EU, even though they commissioned the study. Ich will in Gottes Namen nicht beweisen, dass die Mobilfunkstrahlung gesundheitsschädlich ist. Das ist nicht mein Begehren. Ich will mit meinen Kollegen, die denken alle wie ich, Zeigen, fragen und uh, aufzeigen, ist da was oder ist da nichts. In 2008, Adelkoffer asked the European Union for more funding to verify the results he'd already obtained and see whether the effects observed with in vitro cells can also be found in living beings. Ich meine, dass diese Studie nicht gefördert wird. Warum ist schwierig zu sagen, wenn die Europäische Union eine bessere Studie gefunden hat, die dies auch kann, nicht, dann freue ich mich darüber. Glauben tue ich es nicht. Meanwhile, all over the world, a multitude of guinea pigs are being submitted to the entire range of microwaves in search of the majority of known illnesses. Many experiments come up with unsettling results. Many come up empty-handed but they all reach the same cautious conclusion. More studies are needed. Une étude 
euh, ne fait pas le, le beau temps ou le mauvais temps. Hein. Il faut vraiment euh, un faisceau de, de preuves. In Bordeaux, France, the IMS is renowned for replicating experiments that have found adverse effects and contradicting their results. These experiments, partially funded by cell phone operators, are led by biologist Isabel Lecroy and Bernard Verret, an expert in electromagnetic fields. Dans notre laboratoire, pratiquement la moitié de nos projets sont des études de réplication de résultats établis par d'autres. Pourquoi on insiste autant sur la réplication Parce que si on ne peut pas retrouver dans les mêmes conditions un effet dans un laboratoire différent, ça veut dire que c'est un effet sur, sur lequel on ne peut pas discuter, enfin, que l'on ne peut pas prendre en compte pour l'évaluation du risque. L'un des meilleurs exemples des résultats positifs qui ont été répliqués par nous et par d'autres sont ceux de, euh, du groupe de Salford en Suède qui avait montré donc une perméabilisation augmentée de la barrière hémato-encéphalique chez le rat soumis à des ondes. Et les résultats que nous sommes en train de publier, mais qui ont été rapportés en congrès, sont négatifs. On est incapable de répliquer les résultats de, de Salford. In Lund, Sweden, in addition to his work as a neurologist, Leif Salford conducts research on rat brains, and in particular, on their blood-brain barrier. The blood-brain barrier is very special. It has tight junctions. As compared to all the other capillaries in the body, the brain has a very special uh, type of wall, which is uh, highly constricted and which just doesn't allow things to leak out. The blood-brain barrier prevents substances in blood vessels from passing into brain tissue. After exposing animals to mobile phone radiation for two hours, Salford noticed that the blood-brain barrier became permeable in one-third of the rats exposed, which provoked a leak of albumin. When we, in the late 90s, after having studied 15 or 1600 rats, uh, and found that this was a solid finding, there is for sure a leakage of albumin, the rats own albumin out into the neurons. These leaks could be causing migraines or according to Salford, the destruction of neurons. A neuronal damage also might be a, a, an explanation when you talk about how a tumor is produced in the special, both the malignant type and the benign type. On, on se dit, bon, là, vraiment, la barrière hémato-encéphalique, si c'est vrai, si c'est reproductible, il faut vraiment en tenir compte. On essaie de le reproduire, d'autres essaient de le reproduire, et on ne retrouve pas la même chose. And yet, the impact of electromagnetic waves on the blood-brain barrier has indeed been confirmed by several teams throughout the world. Of the 15 or so studies published, the majority confirm this type of effect. How can we explain that studies on the same animals seeking the same effects provoked by the same waves wind up with opposite conclusions. The confusion that emerges from all these carefully run experiments reflects the massive stakes resting on this research. Under pressure, laboratories find themselves pitted against one another. Some, funded by operators, are faulted for being lenient, while others are accused of negligence in their protocol.